name's Ursula and this is the channel where I interview people who have achieved financial independence. If you enjoy listening then please do subscribe. So today on Firefighter, I'm talking to Simon, who achieved financial independence at the age of 40. Hello, Simon. Hello. Um, <laughs> so thanks for being on my show. So just first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. What did you do before you achieved financial independence? Okay. Um, the, last, the last thing I was doing before I sort of retired was hairdressing. So I had a hairdressing business, um, which I ran for 15 years with my ex-girlfriend. And um, yeah, that I, was, I, but I was also developing property and buying property at the same time and investing uh, the money I earn in various projects. Um, okay, so yeah. you kind of very much like running your own business, but then also doing a bit of property investing and investing in the stock market as well. Yeah. So a like, bit of a like things. Yeah. Um, always, um, yeah, just always looking to do something with my money, you know, whatever money in the bank is just doing nothing basically, isn't it? It's dead money. So always just looking for opportunities really. Yeah, um, no, definitely. I think especially at the moment with sort of almost record low interest rates, you just get so little um, for your money and savings at the moment and certainly not anything that's really going to, you know you know that's going to keep up with inflation anyway um now's a, good, now's a really good time to borrow money yes yeah <laughs> no i've heard quite a few people say that um you know if if you can if, you know if you can borrow money now and try and you know pay it off whilst interest rates are still low yes so when did you kind of first become interested in the fire movement or in kind of financial independence and what kind of sparked that interest? Yeah, the, the sort of, well, the more retiring early is some was, is a moment I can sort of define is because, because I had some clients that were dying early. I mean, before that point, I was just wanting to be wealthier, I guess, and be, be in the, be, uh, to have a good financial income. So I was to building my business and, you know, and looking to, yeah, just to, to build a better life, a, a, a more of a rich life really was my desire before that a point uh, when I was 37 and when I was 37 or maybe 36 and a bit, uh, I had a client and my girl, ex girlfriend had a few clients. We had several clients that all died pre retirement, and on retirement and we were just like and we'd have been cutting these guys hair for years we knew their retirement plans we knew their what they wanted to do and we were just like wow we've got plans and we're we we can not <laughs> put them off so we sat down and did some sums and i said well because we both wanted to do some traveling and uh just said right okay well let's work out how can we um get ourselves in the position where we'll have an income and we can travel indefinitely and um how can we get there and we thought well we had at the time a couple of property several properties and we sort of moved sold one paid one off rented that out and um looked to paying off the other ones which was yeah <laughs> So that's really interesting. So you, it wasn't necessarily a long term goal, you know, your initial goal was just to sort of live a more sort of financially independently wealthy life rather than necessarily being able to sort of stop work. But then it was this kind of experience yeah. with, with, with your clients. And it's interesting you say that because you're not the first person who's said that. In fact, I don't think you're the first guest. Um, you know, the people have have said to me that sometimes in some cases it's it's seen their own parents even die before retirement yes. Um, yes. And, and put so much of your life on hold, which is kind of what gets me. And it's something that 
I feel really strongly about is it seems a bit bizarre that we almost spend not necessarily the best years of our life, but the most sort of healthiest years of our lives in terms of what we can actually do. We spend that being beholden so often to, to someone else, you know, whether that's, mm. you know, an, an employer or, you know, even if you're, if you're debt. Got, yeah, exactly. An employer or debt or, um, being self-employed and, and then by the time sometimes you reach you know i don't know 60 65 and let's face it increasingly 70 that's what they're talking about with kind of the younger generation you know that's when the government says oh well, you know you, you can retire now and you know presumably you've built up your pension fund but that doesn't necessarily mean a you're going to reach that age but b that you're still going to be in the physical position to perhaps do some of the things that you might want to do yeah yeah mm, yeah that. exactly um one of my pre enjoy them. <laughs> yeah yeah if you're 65 you're not going to fit in much um on uh, copan yang full moon party <laughs> <laughs> no exactly you, you're 40 you might not but you, you can try <laughs> yeah um one of my previous guests actually yeah he said that for him he leads a very active life he does a lot of cycling kayaking running you know all kinds of um you know activities like that and i think he he was sort of retired in his late 40s early 50s and you know he can sort of still do that but he said yeah. you know he's aware of the fact that he's getting older and if he'd kind of waited until his mid 50s his, his mid 60s or even 70 yeah. you know you, you just can't necessarily do that so i think yeah, I think what you say is something that can kind of resonate with, with people a lot. Um, but I mean, I'm quite interested, obviously, in the kind of property side of things. Was that, did you kind of ever buy stuff and, and do it up? Or, or did you tend to kind of buy, rent it out and then, and then you know, sell or, or keep? For the I, had, I had a lot of that sort of accidental, things just accidentally came to be the way they were. <laughs> it made took the best advantage of several situations. Um, what one I can think of particularly was um, I had a business partner in one of my salons. I wanted to buy him out. He wanted me to buy him out. Um, the way things were it, at the time, the bank uh, the banks weren't particularly doing great interest on commercial commercial mortgages because we actually owned the property there. So I thought, well, this isn't really. Maybe I need to find another way to improve my equity I had the money to buy him out but the, the loan i was going to get from the bank was going to be so poor that it's better for me to own half the building than it was all of it by the time it's paid off so i started to look i thought well maybe i'll buy um a buy to let property and sit on it for a couple of years and then sell it or whatever so i started looking at buy to lets and they were you had to put like 35 percent down or maybe 25%, and I had like 25 grand at the time, and I thought, well, you can't do much with that on a buy to let. You can't buy much for 100 grand. This is a few, I don't know, 2010, say. And uh, in the end, I realised that the house I was living in, I could get permission to let that, and then buy something for like 80 grand more with the 25 grand, because it was for myself. So I did that instead, and that was probably an example of a lucky move really that worked really well for me i mean that's quite an innovative mood um i've moved yeah. i've not actually heard of anyone um doing that before it's a um, bit like a flip like um <laughs> yeah like what the what the politicians did <laughs> uh, yeah a little bit like that but it was like my own version yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you know, like four years ago um so i did that I changed um, the house I lived in and rented out the one I lived in and bought another one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's um, yeah, that's really interesting because yeah, that I, 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 I that, yeah, like I say, that's just not something that I've ever really thought about or um, considered. It's, it was like a magic moment for me, <laughs> but it worked out really well. Um, yeah, because you could get so much more. I could get so much more at the time, and the market was low. So yeah, it was a good move. Yeah. Um, so you've almost talked about, you know, your kind of journey seems 
to be like you know you were always interested in investing and making money but it, it wasn't until obviously um you know you saw people pre-retirement age suddenly dying that you kind of thought yeah. that kind of shifted your thinking what mm. do you think is important to achieve financial independence in in terms of mindset mm. i think like if you so if you if you really want something you have to stay focused on the, on your goal um you can't be you can't deviate from your goal really you can a bit i mean you have to be flexible but you know it's keep your eye on the prize isn't it and just keep motivated um for, for me i changed when there was a, um, a, re a recession in when the recession started in 2008 i spent quite a bit of time reducing my expenses and that that sort of opened my eyes to how much you can save like how much you how much waste there is in your we that we have and i just sort of carried that on a lot in my life um and i think i think if you can make the right sacrifices like a friend of mine got married in st lucia i did not miss his wedding but um i probably would not go and buy a costa coffee <laughs> which he would which he would so i you know it's making the right sacrifices and getting your priorities right yeah um, i'm exactly the same actually yeah. it, as in i really relish um experiences and mm -hmm. friends and family and i'm yeah. never going to be one of these people that you know won't go to someone's birthday because i don't want to spend 30 quid on a meal or mm. you know won't go to someone's wedding because those kind of experiences really mean a lot to me and i personally believe in kind of investing in in friendships and, and relationships and yeah. like family members but on the flip side i'm not a particularly materialistic person so you know i don't particularly like clothes shopping at the best of times let alone with obviously all the queuing that we're having to do now during kind of this um covid19 pandemic you know i'm not that bothered about getting the kind of the latest gadget so in my mind it's kind of like well you know that 30 quid or whatever that i'll spend at a meal having a nice time with a, a friend yeah that's kind of offset and that's worth it to me because it adds value to my life but i won't necessarily be bothered about yeah getting a flashy car or anything like that so i think you're right a so, lot of it is just about yeah. balance you can search out those places that are good value as well yeah but you don't have to go to the best restaurant but you can go to a good value restaurant and yeah. have a really good meal you just yeah. need to know where to go yeah. and appreciate appreciate the simple things yeah like you say if you can appreciate simple things you don't need to have luxuries um yeah i've got friends that have said oh so i'd love to retire and this friend he works in the city and he's got low he earns a lot of money and i was so i said well if you sold you know if you didn't have that ten thousand pound watch and those two thousand pound shoes on you probably could yeah <laughs> so, um it's just yeah and drink 50 quid bottles of wine yeah no and you i mean it's ten now <laughs> yeah so much of it is is lifestyle inflation as well isn't it yeah. as in like you say people don't realize how little they actually need mm. and i think during um lockdown anyway in in the uk um so yeah for anyone who's not aware obviously i'm kind of recording um october 2020 so a bit of an odd right. year but one thing that i found actually was that i managed to kind of save over half of my income and i'd never ordinarily you know have done that or been able to do that now you know admittedly that is literally not doing anything apart from staying in and perhaps spending money on the odd takeaway and i'm not saying i'd want to live my life like that because i personally wouldn't i'm quite an extrovert i like being out and about i like seeing people but I think for a lot of people, it probably did open their eyes to thinking, well, how much money do I actually need? You know, what, what do I value in life? Yeah, some of my friends have said that they're going to work less and spend more time with their family. I mean, which is not a bad idea as well. Um, but really, just as it, after the kind of lockdown experience and... Yeah, yeah. They're like, All right, I'm going to do less work. I don't need to earn so much money. If I spend less money, I can do like the simple things i enjoy with with the kids or that sort of stuff though so, 
Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a positive for a lot of people. Yeah, and also um, work, it, you know, it costs quite a lot of money. You know, when you yeah. think of like the, you know, the, the commute to work, um, you know, the buying of people, obviously you don't have to do this, but the buying of lunches, um, you know, even buying, you know, birthday presents or leaving gifts for, um, yeah. you know, for colleagues. But also one thing I find is... Do you, do you buy lunch at work? I don't. No. <laughs> no, I don't actually. I, my rule, so, so I work from home a lot at the moment, but my rule <laughs> is I'll only buy lunch out once a week. And I will often try and combine that with lunch with an acquaintance or a friend or a colleague who I get on with. So it's not yeah, just kind of buying something. Place. Exactly. Yeah. It's not just buying something from prep, but it's actually, yeah, it's, you know, it's a little bit more of a kind of a, a special occasion. Um, so that's, I, think that's, I, saved like, I think I saved like £30,000 not buying my lunch at work every day. I, between me and my ex-girlfriend, we saved 30000 I worked it out. That's crazy. Like, I think it was quite a few years, but it was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a fair, it's a fair chunk of a mortgage. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it, yeah, it really, it really adds up. Um, mm. But it's just one of those things that, yeah, people just don't tend to really think about. But also one thing I find is, is when I'm, like often on the weekend, I actually don't need to eat as much. So I can often get away with having two meals. Yeah. Whereas when I'm working, um, I actually have to eat more, you know, because I'm using up a lot of brain power and, of course, you know, so there's I, even, I, the, do, I do a lot of cycling, so I eat tons. Oh, tons. right. So you're, you're not, you're not finding that that's uh, saving you money. But, no. um, <laughs> I do a 24 hour fast every now and then on the day off. That'll save me a few quid. Um, but just getting back to some of the stuff about um, mindset. So, yeah. Did you, because I suppose a lot of, for a lot of people, you know, achieving financial independence can seem like quite a tough mountain to climb, very much an exercise in deferring gratification. I know you've talked about, you know, just being really kind of focused and sticking to a goal, but you know, sometimes life, you know, let's face it, it can kind of throw curveballs at you. I suppose, are yeah. there any downsides to achieving financial independence? And I suppose what I mean by that is, you know the compromises that you had to to make in order to retire early yeah i don't, I don't think my yeah my ex-girlfriend was completely on board with the sort of cutting back on certain things in life and she had a bit of an attitude of like oh we can just buy that or you can just pay someone to do that or and um i that caused a few problems <laughs> in our in our relationship in the end. So I'd say that's probably the, the probably the biggest crack in in achieving financial independence for us was uh, was that over the time definitely yeah. didn't a good thing. But apart from that, I mean, the work the probably the major downfall of financial independence is that is the free time you have when you f have all this free time. And you're just like, oh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> Everyone else is at work. Yeah. Um, so you're like, right, okay. So you need to def you need to have something to do. Yeah. Because you're going to be like, hmm, like I don't know. I, I cycle, so that can I can take up as much time as I like with that. But um, when I came, when I decided to come out to Spain, um, I won't say why, <laughs> but it's um, the B word. And uh, so I just thought, oh, I got, I got on to leave England. Oh, um, I came out to Spain, I spent a month here, did a bit of cycling, looked around for some properties and I thought, I'm going to be really bored <laughs> if I just come out here and cycle and like everyone's working. And so I thought, I need something to do. So I bought a property, uh, which is uh, in the mountains. It's a freehold farm like a small holding and I have like almonds and olives and carobs and growing my own food and living off grid so that, oh, that's wow. been yeah so it's just occupying your time is probably one of the biggest biggest downfalls yeah. yeah I think you've said two things there which are really interesting I think first of all what you say about your relationship 
I like the fact that you're honest about that because I think that sometimes I feel within the fire movement that people often talk about you know achieving financial independence as if it's just something that one person does sometimes that is the case but you know yeah. a lot of the time people do have you know in and out of relationships or they may be married or they may have children or they may have family responsibilities or caring responsibilities and I think you're right I think sometimes it, it can be a bit of a balance and it can be a bit of a struggle yeah. and I think sometimes within you know within the movement I don't think there's enough that's kind of really made of that um I think I've seen know, people talking about it yeah yeah I I think that that's kind of good. Yes, I know. I think recently, um, I think, yeah, definitely on the some of the Facebook groups, there seems to have been a bit more of a discussion about it, but um, which I think is good because I think it's, you know, it's 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 real life. And sometimes some of the concepts can seem a little bit, um, you know, theoretical. Um, but the second thing that I like that you picked up on is I think you're right it's easy to kind of think oh you know it'd be brilliant to retire early but if you're the only person who's retired early <laughs> what, what are you going to do you know yeah. and, and if you're your friends are kind of working and they've got their other responsibilities you're right you do have to be quite imaginative and kind of carve out a life for yourself with you know obviously with you that's cycling um that's something not that i can relate to but once my after my mum retired she has yeah. got massively into cycling I mean, she's almost like fanatical about it. She goes every day. <laughs> she's lost so much weight. You know, she's a lot healthier, actually. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Um, I think that's one thing I would say about working hard is you can lose focus on your own health. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't start cycling until I was 36, 35. And I've been, and I think if you're fit and healthy, it gives you you're in a better position to to achieve your goals as well yeah Definitely. yeah no, no. health and fitness yeah no mm. definitely um yeah i yeah no i completely agree and i think also it's um it could be just be stress as well and you yeah know, the kind of the physical and the mental impact that you know that has on you and i know i've you know i've seen that with people I know who've retired from really stressful jobs and they they just look so much better it's yeah. amazing the transformation and they just look healthier <laughs> brighter um yeah. and it, it just kind of goes to show how much of the the job was kind of taking out of them I suppose um I definitely felt better the day I retired well a few weeks after I retired definitely yeah stress wise for sure but see, yeah. so you don't ever think about going back because how did it feel that kind of last last day ah uh, yeah i cried because <laughs> uh i was leaving work and moving to spain as well and i was also 40 <laughs> on exactly i just said right i'm at 40 that's what i'm going so i i <laughs> it was a really emotional day um so yeah it was it was it was it was a, like an intense feeling um but like after the next day i was like yeah now is the start of a new life basically i'm going to be doing something completely different wow. um but that 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 commit that sort of daily day in day out grind of going to work was no longer my future so that was quite um yeah it's quite 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 a moment but it was it was good to good to 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 just sort of hit that target really yeah that's quite a lot of change to happen yeah. in quite a short period of time mm. i had to sell my business as well <laughs> which wasn't very which got quite it didn't it actually didn't sell to about two months later but like i left i left anyway and left some guys running it and they yeah they ran it okay for a few months they did quite well <laughs> oh wow new so, owners took over so now you've kind of got this new life in Spain. What kind yeah. of, we've talked about it briefly, but what kind of sort of projects are you currently working on? How do you fill your time? Um, yeah, yeah. it should be interesting to learn a bit more about, yeah, what you're doing with your life at the moment. So 
Uh, so I bought this this small holding here, and I was we I just became quite interested in self sufficiency and keeping my costs, bringing my life costs down really low. After this, well, I've just always been interested in in that since working towards fire, bringing my expenses down. So I started growing my own food and I got chickens and almonds. And But this farm was actually abandoned for 15 years before I bought it. Yeah. I bought it with my mum, actually. And it, no one had been working the land or looking after the trees or anything. So it's been a bit of a project. Um, and the house was... Yeah, it still needs some work, <laughs> a lot of work, but it's getting there. But we've bit, we've put like solar panel system in, some big battery banks, and um, everything sort of eco and LED lighting. So, and our bills are literally almost zero, like really low, really low. My biggest bill is my is my medical insurance out here. So that's. And there's not, there's no way to get that down, (laughs) unfortunately. So that's what I I spend my days doing when I'm not cycling. And the rest of the time I go cycling. I love, I like mountain bike racing. Uh, It's what I do most of the time, but not this year. All the mountain bike races are cancelled. There aren't any. So um, just training now. Training for races that might happen next year. Yeah. yeah yeah fingers crossed um mm. so i mean that's a that's a huge project to undertake it actually reminds me of a book which i read early this year and fortunately i can't remember the guy who wrote it um but it was Dropping about, over yes yeah. yeah that's right and um he did a follow-up book as well which i read yeah i haven't read that yet <laughs> Um, but yeah, so just hearing you talking about that, um, yeah, made me yeah. think about, um, he was his, way out there. He was, he's out in Andalusia yeah. in the alpaca, alpacas, and that's really far out. Yeah. Um, um I think he's a bit even more off grid than I am. <laughs> it sounded, yeah, it sounded pretty, like he almost just bought a, sh- a shack or post. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really lucky. We're living in a modern house with modern conveniences um but we still are off grid so we've got like a dishwasher and um a fridge freezer and a cooker <laughs> I don't know. tv internet we've got really good internet and we're in the middle of nowhere so you're so not we, living in that rural you're not living in the farm then you you or, or you yeah. do oh wow God, that's seriously mm-hmm. impressive um, yeah, the nearest village is six kilometers Oh, okay. And and how have you found it? I mean, I presume um, you're kind of fluent in Spanish. You're learning Spanish. Um, yeah. How do you? <laughs> is there is there kind of much of a financial independence circles there, or any kind of? If you if if you're retired, I guess <laughs> everyone here is everyone here is over sixty. Pretty much. There's English that I know of. Um, there's not many. Oh, there's one younger guy that lives in the village, but he's he's a he's a painter and decorator. Um, and actually, I did spot an English number plate down the road as I came back from a cycle earlier. So, and that, I've never seen them before. So, they're obviously new around. But uh, I'm not sure about the Spanish doing fire. I, I've got a, f- a friend who's quite wealthy here. He's got a building company. And uh, he's always working. He's like mid fifties. He rides bikes, obviously. And I said, "Oh, when are you going to retire?" He said, "Well, at sixty-five, like everyone else." And I just thought to myself, "You could retire a lot earlier if you wanted to." But he yeah. he enjoys working, I guess. Yeah. Um, but say, saying that, I said to him, "Should we do this bike ride?" And he's like, "No, I can't." I was like, "Why not?" I've got to work. I was like, mm, <laughs> "You don't really." <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, no, so not there was um yeah not not really a fire movement here, but maybe I could try and encourage one. Yeah, Spanish. no, you yeah. never know. There is a lot of people living off grid in like self sufficient lifestyles. I guess that's you, their self. That it's a different type of financial independence. They don't need much money, so they yeah. 
um, they, they very much. Um, it's quite amazing to see. It's all, sort of a back to the old ways here, like yeah. the way some people live. They're, it's been an eye opener to see um, people just work, you know, it's just so, it's information has been passed down through generations and just people living in farmhouses with open fires and they grow all their own food. And I mean, they do have modern conveniences, but some of them don't. Some of them don't have, they have sort of well water. They, they have like, um, uh, they don't have a proper toilet. They, you know, they go in a, in a shed outside still. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. Really, that's quite old school. Uh, very, yeah. uh, very much lean fire rather than kind of yeah. fat fire. Definitely. Um, yeah, they're not, they have no private jets. <laughs> but no, it's, ama it's amazing to see people living like that. And they, you know, they're happy. They're happy. That's for sure. And were there any, um, I know you kind of hinted upon your um, reasons for moving to Spain, but financially, is it, is it kind of a, a cheaper standard of, of living over there? Or is that, or did that not really come into your decision making process? I think it, the, um, I, I used to live in Spain when I was a lot younger for a little while. I played professional roller hockey for a bit, <laughs> but well, semi-professional. But um, so I wanted to come back and I just thought this is a great place to cycle. And like you say, you can buy cheap property here. And then there's obviously this opportunity as well to be living extra cheap. I thought that's great because I'll still be able to save money because I'm still saving money to invest, which is how I became interested in fire. Like more recently, I'd never heard of it until the coronavirus situation. And I was worried about my income from various sources. So I started to think I need to like diversify my income. And I sort of looked into, I saw, I wonder what's going on because I haven't really been focusing on investments for ages. And I knew the stock market had crashed and I thought, right, so what's going on? And I found a podcast on by a guy and uh, yeah. And then I was like, oh, this is what I've been doing <laughs> for all these years. And yeah. so, but obviously these people are looking, are switched on with investing generally, like what's happening now yeah. to, a de to a degree. I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't say everyone is switched on with it and they, people make, some people might be making easy options early in their fire, safe options. I guess some people aren't gamblers, but um, yeah, certain things are good to put your money for a while, but they're not it's not really going to make money. I, I found some, like I went on some groups. I said, Oh, what are people doing with their money? And they're saying sort of putting in these funds, which is, which are solid, but they're not making money. Not like I like to. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's interesting. So you're, yeah, you are. And I'm going to say this again. You're not the first person who's told me that you achieve financial independence before even realizing there was a movement. Yeah, yeah, which is quite interesting. Um, but it means there are people out there. It does feel like, you know, there was a bit of like, you said earlier about one of the negative sides to financial independence. I felt a bit, when I, when you, when I achieved it, and I, was, I felt a bit guilty about, about not having to be a productive member of society as such. Not, not going to work and being able to get out of bed when I like, that sort of thing. I felt feel a bit guilty sometimes about that. I feel guilty for my friends that are, um, that are yeah, having to still crack on with it, really. <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose there's two things you could say in relation to that. Is one is it's I find it, it's not necessarily the case that going to work means that you're a productive member of society, as in. You know, there are many ways to, to give, to contribute to a society and to the world that I suppose don't involve um, being paid. And I suppose, secondly, yeah, in relation to your friends and peers, you, know, you obviously always had a goal. And like you say, you kind of minimise costs. You, know, you weren't going out there getting the cost of coffees or, you know, buying flashy watches or whatever. And ultimately, that is, you know, that's kind of led 
led to you to sort of be where you are and that's a kind of a choice that you made and I know um, that that is still difficult <laughs> but I think yeah volunteer I did some voluntary work in England before I came out I was doing some stuff but in Spain I haven't seen any opportunities yet there is a roller hockey team out nearby in the local village which obviously hasn't been operating for a while but now I'm on my feet sort of thing in Spain I'm in probably in a position to start doing some voluntary work my girlfriend's been volunteering at a local horse refuge a little bit and she's helped out with them um, but yeah apart from that I haven't seen many opportunities really yet here well, I'm sure stuff will crop up, but that yeah. leads me yeah. very nicely on to my last question, which is, is there anything that surprised you about achieving financial independence? I had a, I had a think about that. Um, I think the, the surprise would be is that I'm not sure that like the word financial independence really is a thing <laughs> because, well, the coronavirus situation opened my eyes to the fact that things can change and no matter where your income's coming from, unless it's a sort of a government pension, which is probably the best thing you can have because it's always going to be there. Um, but that obviously comes up with an age. You know, you have to wait for that. Uh, when you're, uh, if you're younger, wherever you have to have money that's invested, that's going to be an income and things can change like that with the coronavirus, I have um, commercial property that I was renting and those shots were shut. And I thought, oh dear, <laughs> if they don't open and they haven't got any money, then they can't pay my rent. And if you have all your money in stocks and shares and all the companies go, well, this is a no dividend year, then you've got a problem there too. And if you've got commercial property in stocks and shares, you've still got a problem. So financial independence is you need to definitely have a very big slush fund as well maybe yeah <laughs> yeah to, to, to just as a backup that was and that's something i've been i'm working on now yeah i had that that lapse yeah that's interesting someone once said to me you know financial independence isn't necessarily a permanent state no and i thought that was interesting because I would agree with that. yeah you, when you think about it you kind of assume all oh, right it's that end goal and you've reached it and that's that but obviously you don't know what's going to crop up in life and like you say you know any income stream apart from potentially you know government pension <laughs> providing yeah. i don't know government doesn't go completely bust which i don't think is possible but there you go i don't know could be wrong um it, nothing is you know, it's not nothing's 100 percent guaranteed um and i suppose that's why it's it's important to diversify as much as possible but also you know not rule out having to make still having to make some kind of income even though you are you have technically achieved financial independence yeah um i'm guessing you wouldn't be going back to to hairdressing or or would you consider it if no, I wanted to do cycle tours out here. So people come out and then sort of organise accommodation and do training with them or see the area, enjoy the roads and be like a guide. But I haven't really been very motivated with that. Um, but um, I, what would I, yeah, I haven't really thought. I'm, I guess if I ever find myself in a position where I need more money, I will have to think of something. Hairdressing is always a good plan B. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do still cut a few friends' hairs, hair out here um, just to keep, keep my skills honed. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what... what mm. Online trading, I, I'm not sure that's the sort of thing I want to do. I don't think I want to sit in front of the screen. I have thought about it. Like, and I sit down, and I just, that's, that's not for me. I, I never really want to work in an office, um, even if it's at my house for a few hours a day. Um, so that's, that's probably not a possibility. Um, the, the farm here has a potential to earn 
I would say 5,000 euros a year, which isn't a lot of money, but when your expenses are pretty low, that's a quite, that's a couple of nice holidays. Yeah. Would that be, would that be letting it out or would that be utilizing the produce and, and selling it, selling that's it? Start, yeah. Yeah. We, we, this year, well, this year we, our almonds were triple what we had last year. Our olives we haven't harvested yet. And we had a, another product which are called carobs. And the year before we had one sack and this year we had 27 sacks. It was only 300 euros. Um, but I feel that that could double again. So it'd be 600 euros. So it's like 600 euros from the carobs, maybe another 600 from the almonds. And then I think the rest can be made from olive oil. Olive oil can be, is quite a good product. Um, well, there you yeah. go then. I think you've got plenty of ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that, no, that sounds really, um, that's quite entrepreneurial, different, different sources of income. Um, I think the cycling tours sound great, actually. Obviously, this yeah. year wouldn't have been a great year anyway. So it's great for tourism. No, no, exactly. The, the farming side of things is amazing how much hard work it is for such little money. But yeah. I do enjoy like improving the environment as well so I'm, yeah. I'm really into that and i by planting more trees and which is the plan so i'm going to plant sort of 40 50 trees a year because there's space for it for a few years so that will increase productivity as well and um yeah just improving the environment is like it's a nice a nice place to be no definitely yeah uh, I no, that. I agree. As in, um, I, I do kind of do an, an office job, but yeah, I'm not, I, I would love to be more practical and also, you know, to do something where you are outside a bit more, which is not to say that that obviously doesn't have its downsides as well. You know, it's all nice saying that, I suppose when the weather's yes. nice, but <laughs> when it's not so nice, it doesn't tend to be quite so much fun, but yeah, I don't, yeah. We, I don't think we weren't built to just kind of sit inside all the time no in front of computer screens vitamin d here is the opposite in july and august when it's hot it's horrible but the rest of the year is brilliant yeah now now is the the best time of year autumn spring winter yeah is it, is it still is it still sort of fairly quite warm there at the moment yes yeah 32 degrees today i think oh. yeah I feel the sun on my face. I went out today, yeah, and I feel like, ooh. But it's going to rain tomorrow, it's going to be 26. Well, speaking from a fairly cold-ish London, um, yeah. I'm definitely very jealous. But thanks very much, Simon. It's been a really interesting thanks. discussion, and I hope um, listeners and viewers enjoy the show. Yeah. I think I just... Yeah, it's been really nice talking to you and um, I guess it's letting people know um, to not, to, to invest today for tomorrow because like the pound today is worth more than it will be tomorrow. So you just got to, to get it in, get it in the bank or get it into something and uh, don't, don't hesitate really. No, definitely. That, that's definitely, that's a great, um, that's definitely a great motto to finish yeah. on. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this interview, then please do subscribe to my channel.